Hello friends! I have some really exciting news. We're going to be jumping into Leviticus. So we've already read Genesis and Exodus and Hebrew uh, Bereshit and El Shemot. And I hope I'm saying this right, but Leviticus is Vaikra. In Hebrew, the original biblical names were based off of the first few words. So in the beginning, and Leviticus, um, I believe it's from the words, and he called. The Leviticus name is from the Latin Vulgate when Jerome translated the Bible. Um, so Leviticus obviously is based off of the name of Levi, the third son um, of the 12 tribes of Israel. So Leviticus is the name that we call it, um, and that's the name that I have in my Bible. So we're going to jump into Leviticus. I know that a lot of people glance over this book of the Bible. They might see it as non-beneficial. I know that there are a lot of rules in the book of Leviticus, but there are a lot of beautiful parts of Leviticus that I think are very beneficial for us to dive into and understand um, as a Christian or as an Old Testament believer. And I do actually know a few people that believe in the Old Testament, but don't believe in the New Testament. And I believe in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I believe that every word of the Bible is beneficial to our reading, just like it says in Timothy. So I'm going to enjoy the book of Leviticus, and I hope you uh, enjoy it with me. I'm going to start by reading chapter 1 of Leviticus. So open your Bible if you want to read along, or you can just listen. Whatever is best for you. Leviticus. Instructions for the offerings. The Lord called to Moses from the tabernacle and said to him, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you present an animal as an offering to the Lord, you may take it from your herd of cattle or your flock of sheep and goats. If the animal you present as a burnt offering is from the herd, it must be a male with no defects. Bring it to the entrance of the tabernacle so you may be accepted by the Lord. Lay your hand on the animal's head, and the Lord will accept its death in your place to purify you, making you right with him. Then slaughter the young bull in the Lord's presence, and Aaron's sons, the priests, will present the animal's blood by splattering it against all sides of the altar that stands at the entrance of the tabernacle. Then skin the animal and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron, the priest, will build a wood fire on the altar. They will arrange the pieces of the offering, including the head and fat, on the wood burning of the altar. But the internal organs and the legs must first be washed with water. Then the priest will burn the entire sacrifice on the altar as a burnt offering. It is a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. If the animal you present as a burnt offering is from the flock, it may be either a sheep or a goat, but it must be a male with no defects. Slaughter the animal on the north side of the altar in the Lord's presence. And Aaron's sons, the priest, will splatter its blood against the altar in the Lord's presence. And Aaron's sons, the priest, will splatter its blood against all sides of the altar. Then cut the animal in pieces, and the priest will arrange the pieces of the offering, including the head and fat, on the wood burning on the altar. But the internal organs and the legs must first be washed with water. Then the priest will burn the entire sacrifice on the altar as a burnt offering. It is a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. If you present a bird as a burnt offering to the Lord, choose either a turtle dove or a young pigeon. The priest will take the bird to the altar, wring off its head, and burn it on the altar. But first, he must drain its blood against the side of the altar. The priest must also remove the crop and the feathers and throw them in the ashes on the east side of the altar. Then, grasping the bird by its wings, the priest will tear the bird open, but without tearing it apart. Then he will burn it as a burnt offering on the wood burning on the altar. It is a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Chapter 2 of Leviticus. Procedures for the grain offering. When you present grain as an offering to the Lord, the offering must consist of choice flour. You are to pour olive oil on it, sprinkle it with frankincense, and bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests. The priest will scoop out a handful of the flour moistened with oil. 
together with all its frankincense and burn this representative portion on the altar. It is a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering will be given to Aaron and his sons. This offering will be considered a most holy part of the special gifts presented to the Lord. If your offering is a grain offering baked in an oven, it must be made of choice flour, but without any yeast. It may be presented in the form of thin cakes mixed with olive oil or wafers spread with olive oil. If your grain offering is cooked on a griddle, it must be made of choice flour mixed with olive oil but without any yeast. Break it in pieces and pour, all, pour olive oil on it. It is a grain offering. If your grain offering is prepared in a pan, it must be made of choice flour and olive oil. No matter how a grain offering for the Lord has been prepared, bring it to the priest who will present it at the altar. The priest will take a representative portion of the grain offering and burn it on the altar. It is a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering will be given to Aaron and his sons as their food. This offering will be considered a most holy part of the special gifts presented to the Lord. Do not use yeast in preparing any of the grain offering you present to the Lord, because no yeast or honey may be burned as a special gift presented to the Lord. You may add yeast and honey to an offering of the first crops of your harvest, but these must never be offered on the altar as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Season all your grain offerings with salt to remind you of God's eternal covenant. Never forget to add salt to your grain offerings. If you present a grain offering to the Lord, from the first portion of your harvest, bring fresh grain that is coarsely ground and roast it on a fire. Put olive oil on this grain offering and sprinkle it with frankincense. The priest will take a representative portion of the grain moistened with oil together with all the frankincense and burn it as a special gift presented to the Lord. Chapter 3 is going to be the procedures for the peace offering. And... In my Bible, I have a study Bible. I do recommend reading commentaries, reading other scripturals or devotionals and studies. I like to listen to different sermons online of teachers that have really spent a lot of time in the Word of God, that really know the Word of God. I am a baby Christian. I am like milk, not solid food when it comes to learning the Word of God. But I think Leviticus is a book that... All Christians should really read. And in my Bible, which is a study Bible, there is so much. I don't think my camera will um, focus. But even on chapter 1, this is the beginning. And this is all just study on the bottom three quarters of the page. Even this side, this portion from here down is all just extra study information. And it tells you so much about what each sacrifice meant and why they had to do specific things and yeast was almost like um, spoiling the batch so in a lot of the things that we've already gone through even in Exodus they talk about not having yeast I do think it's very beneficial if you want to grow in your walk with God to dive deep into the scripture and to try to understand it on a deeper level. Whether you're a new Christian or you've been a Christian for a long time, I think there's so much in deep diving into the word of God, understanding the purpose of the sacrifices and understanding what Jesus did for us. I think when you gloss over these things, it's easy to not truly appreciate the cross and what Jesus has done for us. Um, so I'm going to continue to read Leviticus, and I'm going to continue to deep dive into better understanding what's going on. But God takes sin very seriously, and the blood of goats is never able to save us from our sins. It's by faith that we are saved. Um, and it says that again in the New Testament. So it is only by faith that we are saved, and we have faith of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And they had faith that these were temporarily able to... Uh, offer forgiveness of their different sins. So anyways, I have so much more studying to do, but I'm just here to read the Bible to you for now. And we've only read Leviticus chapters 1 and 2, and I hope this is of some benefit to you. I'll try to add some resources in some of the subtitles and the description of the video. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed that and more to come.